Hello everyone. Now, before we start this video, I would just like to mention that this is not an end-all be-all solution to improving your study habits. Everyone learns in different ways, and there are many more techniques that can be used to achieve better grades. With that being said, let's get started. People often say you should study smarter, not harder. There is a certain appeal to this because nobody wants to be studying all the time, when they could be going out and doing things that are more fun, like everything. Being smart about studying is actually easier than you think. Just space out your study time and you'll be good to go. Oh, come Come on, that's way too hard. Who has the time to study multiple days in a row? Wouldn't it just be better to study all at once and be done with the darn thing? Well, actually, you have the time to study multiple days in a row, and it will be a lot better for you than studying all at once. Let me explain. First, there are three different processes we should introduce as a foundation for this concept. Encoding, when you experience information. Long-term memory, where you keep stuff that you have truly learned. And retrieval, the process of getting stuff from your brain whenever you want. Let's begin with encoding, the beginning of the learning process. Since this is your first encounter with new information, it's important to coherently pay attention to everything that is being thrown your way. One of the easiest ways to do this is to put away your laptop and take notes by hand. But I need my laptop! I use it for- No! We all know that all it's going to do is distract you with various notifications, dank memes, and funny fail compilations. Now is not the time for that. You've got a lot of stuff to put into your brain. Besides, studies have shown that handwriting your notes are a lot better than typing them on a laptop, possibly due to the fact that it makes you put things in your own words and forces you to use more brain power, which leads to better encoding. Alright, so you've got the encoding down, and now it's time to bring all that good stuff to long-term memory. To do this, we have our good friend the hippocampus. But the hippocampus can't do this alone. It needs your help. How can you help? By not forgetting the information before the hippocampus can put it into long-term memory. The hippocampus is a busy part of the brain and simply can't do everything at once. It'll need some strong reminders before it gets to processing your information. So you'll need to restudy consistently. While there is no specific time frame for you to forget things, it is best to restudy as frequently as possible. A good strategy would be 5-10 to 10 minutes before class begins. Just review your notes from the previous lecture. Easy! But I like to scroll through my newsfeed before lecture starts to relax. Sure, you might not be able to get the dopamine rush of being on Facebook Facebook or Twitter, but you'll be substituting those moments for free time later. Sound too easy? Still believe that cramming is the way to go? You're not alone because in this study, where students had to memorize the artists of famous paintings and take a test on them later, 78% of the students believe that cramming was a better way to study even though 78% of the students participating in the test performed better with space studying. To put it simply, they were wrong. So now that we got that silly notion out of the way, let's get back to the hippocampus. There are two ways to remind the hippocampus about your information, either by re-encoding lecture material by reviewing your notes, or or through retrieval by testing yourself. Retrieval tends to be more effective and uses a lot more brain power than re-encoding. This has been shown in studies to lead to longer retention intervals. Now the hippocampus can do its job by putting your new information into long-term memory. So, to summarize, encode information by writing your notes by hand, review your notes for 5-10 to 10 minutes before every class, study frequently through retrieval by testing yourself, and perform better in class because lecture material will be properly stored in your long-term memory. Yay, cognitive psychology! I hope you guys took something away from this video. If you didn't, try thinking about this analogy. If your brain was a fence and lecture material was paint, you wouldn't just lightly stroke the fence with a dry paintbrush and then come back a few weeks later to throw a bucket of paint on it. It will look awful, be completely uneven, and probably get weathered away very quickly. No, instead you'd put an even coating of primer on the fence, then you'd put a layer of paint on it, then you'd put another layer of paint on it, and so on. It will last longer and look nicer. Your brain should be like this, not like this. Thank you for watching and happy studying!